Hey guys, what's going on? I know it's been a while since I did my last video and I know I've missed you guys, but I'm back today, so don't hold it against me. Um, I've missed you guys. I've missed you guys. Give me a hug. I'm hugging everybody <laughs> through the screen. Um, I'm back today and I want to talk about embracing your shadow. I want to talk about embracing your shadow, specifically um, to all those people out there that consider themselves to be spiritual on your spiritual path. You know, you want to grow, you want to heal, you want to raise your vibration, you want to activate your DNA, like all these different beautiful things that we want to do, right? But one of the th one of the things I feel that's missing from the conversation that I never hear anybody talk about, that is a big part of my personal lifestyle and a big part of my healing services is embracing your shadow, dealing with your shadow, right? So I'm going to keep it really simple. What is your shadow? Your shadow is, it's that part of yourself that doesn't think you deserve love. It's the part of yourself um, that criticizes you. It's the part of yourself that beats you up all the time, that makes you feel guilty, that makes you feel ashamed, um, that makes you feel like you're not doing enough. Um, that no matter how well you do, it still comes in and says you could have done better. You know, it's that inner closet that we all have in the back of our mind, somewhere back there. It's that inner closet that we all have. And within that inner closet is guilt and shame and anger and um, frustration and tension and criticism and judgment and um, fears, all of our fears, fears of abandonment, fear of being lonely, fear of losing our freedom, fear of never living our dreams, fear of never being loved, fear of never being able to um, make the amount of money that we want to make. All that stuff, all the things, the shadow, and the reason why I say shadow is, you know, the things that are dark, the things that, that don't empower us, the things that disempower us, that we keep so close to ourselves that we keep hidden that we don't want anyone to know about you know the things that we've done in our past you know the things that we might be interested in you know sexually whatever that is or when we like to have fun or whatever our secrets are whatever our secret things that we find pleasure in that we might be um afraid to share with other people because we don't want them to judge us we don't want them to think of us as this or as that you know, all that stuff that makes us worried about our appearance, how we come off to others, um, all those things that make us worry about what people think about us. You know, that voice in our head that wants to be liked, that part of us that wants to be loved and liked. And so we're extra nice or we're always politically correct or we never quite say what we really feel or we always say yes when we mean no. That's the shadow. That's the shadow. You know, and when we talk about doing the work, when I say do the work and doing the inner work, that's what the inner work is. The inner work is having tools, whatever those tools are for you, that help you to be able to go into the closet and deal with those things one at a time, you know, however often they come up, you know, and you'll know that, that they are up to be dealt with because... Your triggers are your indicators. Your, your triggers are your indica indicators. Can't talk today. And I always say this, when you, whenever you're triggered, whenever something triggers you emotionally, it's internal feedback from the soul about something that wants to be healed within you. So it's the same thing. Whenever you're triggered, it could be anything. It could be something that you see online, something that's happening in the world, something political, you know, a world event a relative, a family member, music. It could be anything that triggered that, that gives you some sort of internal negative emotional response. It's internal feedback. That's letting you know, oh my God, the closet door just opened inside of me and something is coming out for me to look at, understand, deal with, so it won't affect my choice making anymore. And that's what enlightenment is. Enlightenment is just you come, you've come into awareness of something, right? It's one thing to know, to always say, I know that I'm love. I know that I'm light. I know that I'm consciousness. I know that I'm spirit having a human experience. But at a certain point, now we need to integrate that. We need to put that to work. We need to go to task, right? And it doesn't matter who it is, how old you are, how young you are, how long you've been on your spiritual path. 
if you feel like I'm a master, I'm an international, world-renowned healer, whatever. Everybody has an internal closet with shit in there to deal with. You know, and we've become um, very good at covering that up, at making it seem as if our life is wonderful, you know, by only posting positivity, by only smi smiling all the time, um, only talking about great things. Meanwhile, all hell's breaking loose inside of us and we are not dealing with it. And as uncomfortable as it may be, um, it's significant and it's important on your way to living an enlightened and empowered life. You know, embracing your shadow. And what I say is compassionately confronting it, meaning you confront something within yourself, but without judgment from a space of compassion, because you understand that it's an inner aspect of you. Maybe it's the four-year-old you or the seven-year-old you that feels lonely or feels upset. And so this is why you do this all the time. This is why you don't trust yourself. Maybe this is why you're needy. So you accept the idea that, okay, I'm going to accept that this is who I am, but I'm also going to accept that now I can do something to change it. Now that I've accepted it, now that I'm owning it, now I can look at what caused it. You know, what's the root of it? How has it been showing up in my life? You look at all aspects of it. You look at it, you know? This is what doing the work is. You have to be willing to look at all the ugly things, the things that you may not want to see about yourself, but you look at it through the eyes of compassion so you can make that change, so you can own it. And this is, you know, this is the basis for everything that I do in my life. This is how I grew spiritually. You guys know um, a little bit about my past. I grew up in the South Bronx in New York. A lot of sustained adversity. My mother died at a young age. Never knew my father. Pretty much raised myself. Um, you know, and so everything that I talk about that I share with you guys, I'm sharing from experience. You know, everything that you guys love about me, that you like about me now is the result of me doing the work on myself. And I continue to do the work on myself. And until the, I take my last breath, there's always going to be something to um, deal with, accept, heal, move out, you know, um, because we're human beings and you're never going to get it all done. And you never get it all done because they're always growing and expanding and learning. You know, different facets, different aspects of ourselves and our personality. The thing you want to invite yourself to do is to have a spiritual practice that supports you every day in staying grounded, centered, and aware. So with that awareness, you can go through the world and you can deal with life from a space of awareness. So then you're at choice. Then you're making choices from your higher awareness. You know, higher awareness meaning working with your angels, working with your guides, you know, following the guidance that Savon gave you when you got a reading with him <laughs> or a healing session, you know, following the information that you got from the book that you invested in or the workshop that you invested in, you know, using that awareness to dictate and inform your choices rather than going through life and it's all the shit in your closet, the guilt, the shame, the anger, the hurt. Wanting everybody to be happy, wanting to rescue everybody, and that dictating your choices, you know. So you, you want to put things in place that work for you, that serve you, so you can do your best to stay in your awareness as you move through life. It doesn't mean life is going to be perfect for you. Doesn't mean that everything's going to be love and light. What it means is, oh, now I have higher awareness. I'm not alone in this. There's issues going on in my life, but I'm not alone in this. Let me tap into my source and through my higher source that will inform my choices, how to respond to this, how to act. And so the spiritual practice is there to practice it every day. So it just becomes a natural part of who you are. And then over time, over years, right? Certain things that really triggered you don't trigger you as much. Or you know how to respond now to certain people, places, and things. And that's where I'm at now at 40. You know, when I was 20 and I started, I was very different. I had a lot of triggers. Now at 40, I don't have as many triggers. Do I still have triggers? Yeah. Am I perfect? No. When things happen, though, I know, wait a minute, let me just chill out. Let me relax. Let me lean into what feels uncomfortable. 
let it pass through me. Let me try to understand, oh, this person isn't hurting me. I actually am remembering something that happened to me when I was six that this person just triggered and now it's coming up for me to respond in a different way so I can respond with love rather than reacting. So it comes back up again so we can respond with love rather than react. And you know, a lot of people leave comments, I think sarcastically on my post and they'll say things like, oh, my energy's all over the place. I'm so sensitive. I can't go out. I can't do this. I can't do that. I'm always getting triggered. It's because there's a lot of shit to heal. Like there's no way around it. We've all gone through stuff in our lives. And you know, our physical body, our nervous system, our emotional body remembers everything that we've gone through. So then when we get older, or when we start to grow spiritually, um, we now have a greater level of awareness. So now all this stuff comes up because now we can bring that greater level of awareness to those things that happen so we can respond differently, so we can look at it with a different perspective and heal it and let it go. You know, and so that's why it seems like things are always coming up or we're always triggered. You know, it's the healing process. You know, it, it's, it's, it's a gift and it's a curse. You know, you can't say you want to live spiritually, you want to live in your truth, you want to live in your light, you want to be happy, but never, ever, ever deal with any of the things that have always gotten in the way of that happiness, in the way of that truth, in the way of your being, you being in your personal power. You know what I mean? You know, it's our job individually to identify all of those internal barriers that we've built against the God within, the love within that keep us from having the kind of relationship we want with ourselves. You know, whatever those barriers are, that's the shadow. But that's where your power is. That's where the juice is. That's where the juice is. That's where your power is. Um, and I want to invite you guys to take a more um, proactive approach to embracing those things about yourself. You know, everybody to a degree has issues with anger because we've all been angry and sometimes the anger has been so painful that we bury it and we forgot about it. I'll tell you something. One time I got a reading. It was a group reading. I was in this um, spiritual program, this mentorship program, and I got a reading from some of the healers and some of the mentors. One of the things they said to me was I had a lot of anger that I was holding on to and I thought, no, I don't. Like I'm the happiest person that I know. I'm always happy. I'm always talking about positivity. And they said, no, you know, going through this program is going to bring out all that anger. And I knew in my mind, I was like, these people are wrong. I don't know what they're talking about. I don't have any anger. What they were talking about was they were able to tap into what was in my inner closet. And so what they were saying didn't resonate for me because I wasn't allowing myself to be open to receive what they had said. And I wasn't ready at that time to deal with that. But guess what? I later realized, oh shit, I have a lot of anger that I've held on to from my childhood that's now starting to come up again. This is why I'm feeling angry. This is why I'm getting triggered. So let me use my tools and my practice to help me process that, understand it, heal it, and let it go. You know, and this is why sometimes when you get a psychic reading or a mediumship reading or work with the healer and they say things to you that they're picking up on and you might feel like, mm, I don't know if that's true. I don't I'm not really insecure or I'm not a people pleaser or I don't rescue people. It's they're talking about things that are in your closet. They're talking about subconscious issues things that you're not even aware of. That's why you go to a psychic. That's why you go to a healer. That's why you go to a mystic. Their job is to help you with your internal transformation by bringing awareness to those things that you're not subconsciously aware of. And you can't do it by yourself. You can't do it all by yourself. There's a lot that you can do on your own, right? You can meditate, you can invest in classes, but eventually you're going to have to work with someone that you trust that feels right and aligned to help hold space for you so they can help you look at whatever it is that you're not able to see because maybe it's too painful. Maybe it's something that you um, have been avoiding. You know, it's different for everyone, but this is why, you know, we work with healers. We work with mediums. We work with psychics as a tool of empowerment rather than 
having someone tell you what to do. This is why I always say in my videos and working with me, I don't tell you your future. I help you look at what's getting in the way of what you want, what's in your closet, so you can clear that out, heal it. Now you're empowered to create whatever it is that you want. Otherwise, you got to keep going back over and over and over and over and over again. And guess what? There's plenty of people out there that will take your money. And there's plenty of people that, you know, I call them psychic junkies. They keep, they go to reader, to reader, to reader, waiting to hear what they want because they don't want to do the work on themselves. And this video, this message is all about doing the work on yourself. You know, now how do we do the work on ourselves? Okay, we start with a basic practice, meditation. You start slow. You don't want to overwhelm yourself. You start meditation. Then from meditation, maybe you start journaling. Then from there, you start, you just figure out intuitively, what am I drawn to? I feel like I need to focus on loving myself. So then you watch my videos on loving yourself. You watch other videos on loving yourself. You invest in books to teach you how to love yourself. You know, maybe you invest in a workshop. Maybe you invest in um, going to a healer or a reader and you have all these things that you're investing in to help you to grow. And then over time, you bring in all these tools and all these things that you're using that work for you. But you have to decide that you want to transform your life and you want to transform from within and then you're going to do everything you can to invest in yourself, invest in your own growth. You know, because it's not always going to be free. And some people feel like, you know, when it comes to spirituality, it should be free. You're helping people. And excuse me, I'm here to tell you that it doesn't work that way. I've been on my path for 20 years. Can you imagine how much money I've spent over the last 20 years learning how to love myself, learning how to perfect my my craft, my gift, um, learning and understanding forgiveness, compassion, how to deal with my pain, how to deal with um, hurts. Um, because I decided that I was important enough for me to invest in myself. So I did it for me. And as a result of me doing that for me, it's affected everything else in my life. Now I feel like I can live my passion. I can live my best life. I can have authentic friendships. But I invested in that. So I want to invite you guys to look at that. To look at what are some ways that you, in your own personal life, you know, doesn't you don't have to have a lot of money but what what are some ways in your own personal life that you can take ownership of your own growth your own internal transformation and start to put things in place that you can practice you know can you at least meditate 10 minutes a day 20 minutes a day can you make a forgiveness list and journal every day who do i need to forgive who do i need to forgive from my past you know what's the guilt that i'm holding on to you know i'm going to give you some tools how about, let's say Monday, you do a forgiveness list. Who do I need to forgive? And then Tuesday, you work on guilt. What's the guilt that I'm holding on to and why? Then let's say Wednesday, you work on shame. What, what am I feeling ashamed about? What do I shame myself for? Then Thursday, let's say you work on um, anger. What am I angry about? Who am I angry at? Where's the anger? You know? And then Friday, you know, maybe you work on... Um, judgment what am i judging myself for and you just go every day but you have a willingness to lean into what feels uncomfortable because you know on the other side of that is what you want on the other side of that is your peace is your um is grace is alignment is connection which is what you want which is what we all want we all want connection we want that connection to source to love to consciousness to our heart you know, we all want that and we're all trying to get that the best way we know how. But the work is identifying what's been getting in the way of it. Because guess what? The connection's always there. Source is always there. Our angels, our loved ones are always there. Love is always flowing to us and through us at any given time of the day, whenever we want. But sometimes there's things that get in the way of that. There's resistance, internal resistance that we carry that some, some of it we're aware of, some of it we're not. But the work is to identify what that is and to heal it, to let it go, and to find tools that work for you that can help you with that. You know, and the beautiful thing about spirituality and living spiritually and um, living a conscious life is you don't have to pick one way. It doesn't have to look like everybody else. You get to decide 
what's going to work for you, what's going to um, help empower you. You get to decide. I'm just sharing what works for me and I'm sharing tools that I use that I feel like really work that I use with my clients. You know, people work with me from all around the world and they get different types of readings with me, but it doesn't matter what reading they get. In the reading, I'm going to bring through whatever information spirit is showing me, which 100% of the time always has to do with something that's going on in their closet, something underneath that they're not aware of. And that's why when people work with me, I always one of the things I tell them is don't tell me anything about you. Spirit's going to show me everything. And my job is to help you live in your greatness by becoming aware about those things that have limited that. Becoming aware of those lies, those wounds, those traumas, and helping you to understand what that is, how it's been affecting your life, so you can be empowered. And once you're aware of that and you're clear on that, then you can make new choices. Then you get to decide what you want to do going forward. You know, and that's the value of working on yourself and internal transformation. So many people go through life with such a big fear, so many insecurities that they carry. Can you imagine what your life would be like if you finally healed it and just let it go? Something you've been carrying for 20 years, 30 years. You know, think about all the possibilities that could come out of that one choice to let that go, to just forgive. All the energy that you're going to save, all the power that you call back into yourself that you can now put into something else that serves you rather than something that disempowers you. This is why I do my classes. This is why I created the Empaths class, to help you understand your energy. What are you taking on? What are you living out that's not yours? Why I created the class for angels, to help you understand how to communicate with your angels. So through that higher communication, you can understand what's not working in your life. This is why I've done more than 300 videos, basically saying the same thing over and over and over again, um, but in different ways. And I'm saying it again in this video, you know? Everything that you need is inside of you, but you have to be willing to go inside and figure out what that is and sit with it. And sit with it and not distract yourself from feeling, not distract yourself by being busy, not distract yourself through social media, not allowing social media to fill an empty void for you, but you filling that void yourself. You filling that void yourself. So I'm at the end of the video, but I just want to say, you guys, you know, I know everybody's going through stuff. Everybody's triggered more now than ever. A lot of people are reporting that they're more sensitive than ever. You know, things are changing. Things are changing in the earth and the planet. Um, everyone's becoming more sensitive, but I believe the reason why we're becoming more sensitive is so we can be more aware about what we're feeling, about what's true for us, so we can navigate our life better, so we can navigate our choices better. It's not there to hurt you. It's not there to, like, to knock you down, to limit you. It's there to empower you. So if you can understand it, then it won't feel like you're at the effect of something that's happening to you rather than, oh my God, this is cool. Like I'm more in tune. I'm more sensitive to my own needs, to my own internal triggers. I'm more sensitive to what it is that I actually want to do and where I need to go. And if you take it, um, if you look at it from that perspective, it's a lot more empowering than it is to go through life feeling like I'm just so sensitive and everything sucks and everything's horrible because Life is actually beautiful. Life is amazing. Life is amazing. There's so many beautiful things that happen every single day, all day. And if you're willing to shift your perspective, you'll start to notice that and see that a lot more. All right, you guys. So as I end the video, I also want to say in next February in Germany, I'm going to be in Europe for a month. <laughs> and on February the 28th, um, all the information is on my website, but on February the 28th, for three hours, I'm going to be doing an intimate workshop, and it's going to be called Alchemy of the Soul, and it's for people that really want to dig into whatever their shadow is and transform that. You know, I was already going to be in Europe for a month anyway, and I decided to do that while I was there, and so the group is going to be limited to only 10 individuals. I'm only limiting it to 10 people so I can work with everyone individually. 
um, on their stuff. There's going to be talks, meditations, healings. I'm going to be giving everybody readings. Everyone um, will be getting one-on-one -on -one time with me, but I'm limiting, limiting it to a small intimate group. Um, so if you live in Germany, all my Germany followers, um, I'm going to be in an area called Weiss, Weissbieden, I think, or Weissbieden is how you pronounce it. Um, it's really close to Cologne and Frankfurt. If you're in the area, if you want to come out, um, I'd love to have you guys um, book fast, book early, because as I said, I've limited it to a small group because I, I, I want to have a small group of people that I can work with specifically one-on-one. -on -one. If it's something that resonates for you, I'd love to see you guys. The information is on my website. Look under um, events and then you'll see all the information. It's called Alchemy of the Soul. I've also posted flyers everywhere. Um, so I hope to see you guys. And, you know, as I end this video, I just want to say thank you guys so much for supporting me over the years. I've been doing videos now, I think, almost eight, nine, ten years. I'm not sure. And you guys have been consistently supporting me, consistently sharing the videos, and I appreciate it. Without you, I wouldn't have grown um, as much as I have grown. And I just want to say thank you. And I want you guys to be empowered to know that you can heal your life. You can heal yourself. You can get over those heartbreaks. You can get over those insecurities. You can get over uh, the depression. You can get over the guilt. You know, you can get over the grieving. You can get over all of that because I've been able to do it. I've been able to do it through my spiritual practice. And that's why I always come on here and I try to share with you guys what is it that worked for me so you can try it. So you can take a little bit here, a little bit there and mush it together into your own formula. But whatever's going to work for you. So I love you guys and I'm grateful to be back to be doing videos and um, if this video has blessed you, I ask that you share it, you know, thumbs it up, share it with others that you know that it would bless. And if you feel like there's a lot of stuff in your closet and you need support dealing with it, go to my website, look through my services, figure out what works for you. And I'd love to support you in that. You know, I have coaching services. I have mediumship readings. I have soul readings. I have soul healing sessions. And I also have services specifically related for couples that are going through difficulty to work with couples together. So I want to invite you to my website, look through what resonates and connect with me. All right, you guys. So be good to yourselves. I love you and I will see you soon. Bye.